So I was inspired to talk about this again. I have talked about this in the past, but it's not like I haven't because I actually have. But I've had so many videos removed and channels taken away from me that and if somebody would have missed me doing this video or talking about this before, I guess I couldn't blame them, you know, but just the same. I decided I should talk about this. That's right. Subconscious signals of body language, you know, and reading body language. Knowing things that you have really no way of knowing before they happen. I mean, you know, I like to call it a gut feeling. I've talked about gut feelings before. And I've told people that if you got a gut feeling, always go with your gut. Now, I've said this several times over the years. And, you know, when I know something ahead of time, that I have no way of knowing, <laughs> okay, and how I knew it was beyond me, but I did, okay, I'll give you some examples, I had somebody living with me once, was a roommate, the guy's name was Billy, yeah, I know I'm Bill, right, real name's William, but this guy's name was Billy, and I'd lay down at night to go to sleep one night, and Closed my eyes and I was like watching a TV set. Seriously. I closed my eyes and it's just like I just turned on the TV set when I closed my eyes. And what was playing on TV that night? <laughs> what was playing on TV in my head when I closed my eyes was two cops coming through the back door of the house I was living in. At this time I was smoking marijuana. Was, I was a young adult yet. And I had two cops coming through my back door, my pot pipe on the counter next to the back door. And they walked right by it without seeing it. And them going and talking to my roommate and going into the room and shutting the door and being in there with him for about 15, 20 minutes. And then coming out with him in handcuffs and taking him off to jail. Now, this is what I saw when I closed my eyes. It was just like watching TV. Two, three days later, that's exactly what happened. Two cops come walking through my back door. Heard a knock at the door, opened it, and there was two cops coming through my back door who wanted to speak to Billy and who went into a room with him, <laughs> a bedroom with him. And came out with him in handcuffs 15, 20 minutes later and took him off to jail. He was gone for over six months. He'd gotten himself into trouble. Now, when that happened, I told Billy what I saw. And I didn't see who they were taking to jail, but I saw this going down. Two, three days before it happened. And all I did was lay down to close my eyes to go sleep for the night. Okay, how that happened, I'll never know. I like to call this a psychic ability that you don't know you have. You and I did it. <laughs> I've never called myself a psychic. I don't master any of this stuff. It just happened. It's like when I was a kid growing up. I see I had a grandma. One my one grandma lived in town and my other grandma lived out of town about 150 miles away. And I grew up in the state of Iowa and she lived in Boga, Iowa, a town called Boga. Okay. And I she would come down and she would visit. She never announced when she was coming, she didn't have a phone. That was long before cell phones, and I mean long before cell phones because I'm a kid yet. So you had landlines. And she didn't even have a phone in her house, a landline. So when she showed up, it was out of the blue, okay? None of us had no way of knowing when she was coming. But whenever she did show up, she'd always spend two, three weeks. Sometimes she'd spend the entire winter with us. 
and go back home during the summer. But it wasn't every year neither. So we never knew when she was going to show up. I would be at school. And I would get on a school bus and be coming home. And I got dropped off where I had to catch the bus. That was three or four block walk. And I would go to where I needed to catch the bus. The bus would drop me back off in the same spot and I would walk back home, right? And so I'm on the bus. I'm headed to my where they're going to drop me off to walk home. And suddenly I know that my grandma's at my house. And I'm like, I don't know how I know it. Don't ask me how I know it, but I know it. And I get off the bus and this is going through my head. Grandma's there. And I would walk to three blocks, three, four blocks, and go around the corner. Bam. There was a car, man, sitting in front of the house. And go in the house, and there she was. Happened to me more than once. Okay. Reading people's body language. Throughout my life, I don't know how. I just know what happens. I will meet somebody. And within a couple of minutes of meeting them, I know things about this person. No lie. I know things about this person that I shouldn't know. I've never met him in my life. I just met him. I've only known him for maybe two minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and <coughs> I know things about this person that I shouldn't know, right? And if I was to say, so you're like this, 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 and this, I would be a nut job and I'd be caught off for it. So I zip my mouth and I don't say nothing, but I know this person's personality, how they act, how they treat others. And it all happened in two minutes. And lo and behold, as if time don't go by, you know, a few weeks, month or so, everything I knew in that two minutes of meeting them becomes reality. They are exactly, exactly as I knew in that two minutes. No lie. Fact. Happens. Okay, and I've had this happen to me more than one time in my life. My brother's ex, the first time I ever met her. Now, here we go again, you know. The first time I ever met her, I knew within two, three minutes of meeting her that she was controlling, bossy, pushy, demanding. That's right. And a bitch from hell. And she was not acting what I saw. She was being all nice and polite and everything. But yet, this is what I saw. And same thing. I couldn't have been more right if I hadn't tried, man. Now, how did I know this? You know, body language. And I've told people recently in the dating arena, that, you know, TFLers should relate to this. If you've gone out and you've actually gone out and been rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected, you learned body language. And if you didn't learn body language out of all the rejections that you experienced for real in your life, then I don't know what to tell you. I can't help you, okay? Most TFLers, if they paid attention to anything at all, they would have learned the body language of rejection. And now they know when they're being rejected before the girl can say no. Before she can open her mouth, you already know that she stereotyped you, she's rejecting you in one to five seconds. Based on what? Body language. Okay, this is as accurate as accurate as accurate gets. 
This is not complete hogwash. This is not delusional, you know. A friend of mine in Germany, he knows, he likes to call it a predictor. I would call it a psychic. Who's a friend of his? <clears throat> she did something that absolutely astounded me. It floored me. I didn't think it was possible. And if it hadn't happened to me for real, I to this day I would say it's not possible. But because it happened to me for real, I know it is possible. It scares me sometimes because to realize that somebody can actually have this ability. Now, what is this ability this psychic, female psychic had? See, I'm talking to my friend on Skype. He lives in Germany. I live in the United States. We're on Skype. His phone rings. He's in Germany. He speaks three fluent languages. Russian, German, and English. No lie. He's a very talented guy. And we're talking. His phone rings. He answers it. I don't understand him because he's talking a different tongue. And he types to me and says, it's this predictor. And she's going to give me a reading. And I says, me? He says, yeah, she's going to give you a reading. I'm going to type what she's saying about you right now. I, okay. Now, hold on. I'm on Skype. You're on Skype. You're in Germany. She's on the telephone with you. She's not even looking at me. She's never met me in her life, and I'm on the other side of the world. But she's going to give me a psychic reading. And so this is what he does. He types what she says. I was in disbelief. She told me things I never told him. He typed experiences that happened in my life that he didn't even know about. As real as real. It was just like she was there when it happened. He had to ask me, did this stuff really happen with you? He literally had to ask me when she was off the phone. And she was 100% spot on accurate. How she knew what she knew was mind boggling and scary at the same time because it's like an invasion of privacy. Somebody's able to go into your head from across the globe through a Skype program over a telephone. Unbelievable, isn't it? Now, I wouldn't believe it myself if it didn't happen, but it happened. So now I've said what I need to say. I felt that I should play this. This is the best I was looking this morning. I've never went and looked into this stuff from other people's perspective, okay? I know what I've experienced in my life, and I don't come up and lie to people. Body language is real. So what I had told TFLers is this. I never once said I was psychic, and I never once going to guarantee this is ever going to get you anybody in your life. But I'm going to tell you two things right now that I know to be absolutely concrete true. Whether you disagree with me or not, I don't give a crap, okay? I know this to be absolutely concretely true. If you go out looking for a date with exception of getting a date and you've been rejected a bunch of times already, your body language is going to tell on you. And if somebody comes along of your opposite gender that reads body language, you'll run her off. Now, I'm not saying that she would have been interested in you to begin with. And I'm not saying that with social engineering, that you'd have been treated right or anything if she had talked to you. I'm telling you, your body language will show no things about you she shouldn't know and she'll be gone. 
She'll see it. She'll know. You'll say, huh? No lie. It's no different than me knowing things about people I met in two minutes that I had no way of knowing or being that accurate. It's no different. Same thing. Okay? Now, I don't guarantee you this is going to help you, but I'm going to tell you this. If you go out just being yourself and hanging around your clip, you get a group of social community, regardless of what, you've got a group of friends, even if it's a small group. If you just go out and do things with your friends and hang out with your friends and don't go out there with the intentions of meeting anybody, you're going out there just to have fun and be with your friends because you already know who you're with. In doing so of your opposite other should appear into your life, you won't be sending off body language signals of nervousness, scaredness, pressure, to please, to do right, to say the right things. Now, whether you believe it or not, if you're under pressure, your body will send out vibes, signals. I don't know if you want to call it energy or what you want to call it. And people with the ability to read this will read this. I know it sounds totally nuts, right? And so I was doing a little bit of looking this morning, and I got this right here. And I want to play this. So this is going to be a lengthy video because this is 14 minutes long. I don't 100% agree with everything he says, but I don't think he's wrong either. Even though I disagree. You know how you got to learn how to agree to disagree? That's the situation here. He says a lot of stuff that I absolutely know is true. I was looking for how to read people, body language. I got up and I've been up a while and I've been researching this looking to see what I could find on what I know is real because I've lived it, right? And here we are. And this is here, I think, was one of the best ones. I saw some that you could clearly see was staged from Dead Talk. Okay, the gal said some accurate stuff, but there was too much staging going on. We have too much BS in today's society, even in the manosphere, when it comes to the looks issue and stuff like this. And your looks match crap, and I'm going to say just what I'm saying, looks match crap. Because I've seen different in real life. Okay. And I'll save that for another video. What I find on the internet is people are overinflating the situation. That's right, they're overinflating it and turning it into something that's not. Even in the manosphere. Because they're adding to, hyping it up, making it into a bigger deal than what it actually really is. And I hate to say it, but that's really what's going on. So let's listen to this. How will you're able to read this signal? Imagine if you could know what a girl is thinking without her ever saying a single word to you. These abilities might seem like they're straight out of a Marvel movie, but the truth is that with the right knowledge, you can get a glimpse into a person's mind and know what they're really thinking. The frequency that allows you to read people like an open book is called body language. And most people are not consciously aware of their own body language. Now, you to pay attention to something. He said something very vital here. That most of you are going to go right over your head. Okay? And he said it. And it's true. The frequency that allows you to. The frequency. Frequency. What a radio is run on. Frequencies. If you got your cell phone. It ain't got no wires hooked to it. You're talking on it and you're making phone calls. What's it doing? It's grabbing frequencies from the tower. That's right. People put off an energy, a frequency. And most of you don't even know you do. But you actually do. You have energy in your body. Whether you believe you do or not, you do. 
as you put off an energy. So see, uh, we're going to play just this little part right here again. Pay attention to the wording because he says it so quick, most of you will miss it. The right knowledge. You can get a glimpse into a person's mind and know what they're really thinking. The frequency that allows you to read people like an see, open book is a frequency called body language. And most people are not consciously aware of their own body language. Therefore, the ability to tune into this frequency and pay attention to the tiny details is like tapping into a whole new world, allowing you to finally see what is unseen by most. According to science, the human mind and body are directly linked, so they are basically mirrors of each other. When a girl is attracted to you, her body will broadcast what her mind is thinking, and the better that you are at reading the signals. This part is true. See, when you're receiving the signals, when you can read the energy, when, whether it's posture, regardless of whether it's facial expressions, whether it's the way they present themselves, hand movements, when you make that connection, it, what, she, what he's telling you here is absolutely true. I know you now, a lot of people say this is bullshit. No, this is not bullshit. This is correct. The better your game will be. You see this all the now, time. I don't like the People... fact he's used the better your game will be. I will never agree with the word game. Okay, never. Okay, that's his prerogative to use it. But I do not believe in or like the word game because we live in a world where everybody thinks everything's a sport and arena competition a game. And we're all out here doing wrong on each other because of that. So let's move on. Around you display odd behaviors, and intuitively, you know that something is odd, but you just don't know what. Picture the girl who was lying to her mother about sneaking out last night. While talking, she might clear her throat often or scratch her head. At face value, these behaviors might just make the girl seem like she has a cold or an itch, but depending on the context, they might also show that she's being dishonest and trying to deceive her mother. If you've ever wondered why your parents are experts at knowing when you're lying, it's because they know your baseline behavior or how you act normally. So it's easy for them to spot the tiny changes in your behavior that occur when you're lying. A great example of this is a girl that I know, and whenever she's nervous, she quickly sniffs as if she's trying to clear her nose. When taken at face value, she probably seems like she's simply clearing her nose. But this tiny gesture that most people would ignore actually means that she's nervous around whoever she's talking to. During any interaction between people, about 20% of the communication is through spoken words, but the other 80% is through body language. A huge part of a person's body language is their voice tone, and you can learn a lot about what is going on inside of their mind just by paying attention to their voice. This is correct. This is so correct, and I know this is accurately correct what he's saying right here about the voice tone. Imagine this. You walk into the cafeteria at school. You see a group of kids sitting at one of the tables. It might even be your own group of friends. If you want to know who the leader of that group is, look for the person who speaks with the strongest voice. Notice how I said the strongest and not the loudest. When listening to each person's voice, some will be loud, some will be very soft, but one voice will sound and feel stronger than the rest. And this is the leader of the group. This is the easiest way to find a leader of- That would be more manly, yeah. It would be like Warren or somebody with a deep voice that don't have to be loud, but it's a very exertive voice, okay? Yeah, my neighbor, Jack. Yep, but he's correct. He's correct at what he's saying here, and if you can't see that, I mean, there's not much I can do for you. You have to back up and really think, and you have to start paying attention. Any group, and it's also a great way to project confidence and become the leader within your own group. The next time that you're walking through the mall or the store, or even when around friends or family, consciously pay attention to the strength of each person's voice. A strong voice is a good sign that they probably also have a strong personality. And a weak voice is a good sign that they probably have a weak personality. But when reading anyone, always make a conclusion based on several signs instead of only one. 
They say the eyes are a window into the soul, and while this is true, so is a person's walk. Every day, wherever you are, you see tons of people walking around. With billions of people on the planet, there is no shortage of people to look at. The average person pays more attention to your words than your walk. But a person's walk is what tells the truth. There are some exceptions to this, but in most cases, a strong walk means the person has a strong personality. The next time that you're around lots of people, really pay attention to each person's walking style and you'll begin to see the tiny details that most people miss. How does this person walk? If they're constantly looking down, avoiding eye contact, or scurrying along with close, aimless steps, this could indicate a weak personality. A person with a strong, confident personality will take wider steps, and when they walk, each step will look meaningful, as if the person has somewhere important to be. A person's walking style, voice tone, and specific body language gestures can all give away what is going on inside of his or her head. But there is yet another way to get a glimpse inside of the mind of anyone around you, and it's with the spoken word. Every day, billions of words are spoken, but very little attention is paid to each individual word. To unlock the minds of everyone around you, pay In today's society, people's ability to pay attention has been completely minimized. People have very short, short, short attention spans. Or you're talking to them and you're openly talking to them right there and they're talking to you. But yet they're not paying attention to what's being said. No lie. In today's society, this is an epidemic. And this right here would impair you or would you wouldn't be able to do what he's talking about. You have to pay attention. So we're going to back up here and go. It's paid to each individual word. To unlock the minds of everyone around you, pay close attention to some of the key words that most people miss. Like body language, the words that people speak allow little pieces of their personality and thoughts to leak out into the world. Picture the kid in school who says the words, I guess, after every sentence. These words, although missed by most people, reflect a lack of confidence and uncertainty. Some other words that people with a weak personality use often are, I don't know. By paying attention to the words that people speak, you'll find that you can group most people into two categories. Those with an active, strong personality, and those with a passive, weak personality. Those with a weak personality will frequently describe things in a passive way, and they'll use words that make them sound as if they are not actually in control of their life and they'll make it appear as if things are just happening to them. Those with a strong personality will speak directly. Oftentimes, a weak personality will leak out through words and cause the person to always sound like they're verbally beating around the bush instead of speaking directly and concisely. It is important to understand that the human brain is very powerful and during thought, it only uses verbs and nouns. It is the adjectives and adverbs that really help to tell the story of what's going on inside of their head. Now before you can effectively read anyone, you should know that childhood experiences are the driving force that shape every adult. The cashier. This is so correct. This is so, so correct. Very much most everything he's told you is so accurate. And now he's moving into an area that, oh my God, I've told people before. Your experience as a child growing up is what will shape you. That's right. The home you're growing up in, people you're around, where your parents is, the friends you hang with, and of course your society. This is what will shape you. And this is where social engineering societies really messed a lot of people up. Okay, but this is where you're shaped at. The local grocery store and the girl in the local bar both live their adult life according to the habits and the behaviors that they learned as children. In other words, the things that we learn and experiences that we have as children shape who we will be for the rest of our life unless we consciously work to change. For example, picture a child who was raised in a way that causes him to become insecure. Because of this, the child might grow up to spend his entire life living with his parents. And if he does finally move out, the fear from the insecurity will show up in other ways and might cause him to fear strangers. Every person develops certain desires and drives as children, and they will go on to spend the rest of their life chasing after these desires.
Another example is the youngest child in the family who was showered with attention by his parents. Later on in life, when he moves away from his parents, he will find other ways to regain this attention that he had lost, such as dressing in an attention-seeking way or taking part in activities that get the attention of other people. Think about the child who was bullied in school. Since bullying took all of his power away and made him feel weak during childhood, as an adult, he will most likely act in ways that help him to look powerful and strong. This is the psychology behind many of the bodybuilders who put on so much muscle that they end up looking like mutants. Knowing things that happened to a person during their childhood, especially traumatic things, can allow you to truly understand why people behave in certain ways as an adult. Even something as simple as the person's birth order can explain how they behave as an adult. Now the four main birth order positions are the oldest child, the youngest, the middle child, and the only child. The oldest child is known to get mad after his younger siblings steal all of the attention from the parents, which can lead to jealousy and even a loss of confidence. The youngest child in a family normally competes for attention with the oldest, and this rivalry can last an entire lifetime. The youngest child is usually a risk taker because as children, they learn that they can get what they want by taking risks. When carried into adulthood, this risk taking behavior can take on many forms some destructive and others not so much. It is no coincidence that most of the extremely ambitious people that you see in the world, such as Jay-Z, were the youngest child in their family. Now the middle child in a family tends to suffer the most because they receive the least attention, and the only child is likely to become overconfident, bordering on arrogant. Something to remember about only children is that they are more likely to be sensitive to criticism, and if they were spoiled by their parents, once they become adults, they might look for every possible way to become the center of attention. Everything you like and dislike, including people, places, and things, are all directly linked to your childhood. And by knowing this fact, you can better know yourself, and you'll be much better at reading other people. They say the eyes are the window into the soul, and if you swap out soul for personality, then there's a lot of truth to this statement. A look into a person's eyes can tell you if they have a weak or a strong personality, and they can even tell you if the person likes you. If you approach the girl that you like at work or at school, and her pupils get very large, this is a subconscious signal that she's very excited to see you and might like you. When talking with your friends, watch their pupils dilate and grow very large when you start talking about a topic that they're very interested in. Eye contact easily serves as one of the most important ways to read someone. And when used correctly, you can use eye contact to project confidence and even attraction. The next time you're around people, pay attention to their eyes and where they look. Evading eye contact is a sign of a weak personality, and if you lack confidence, it is one of the favorite ways for girls to read you and find out. One of the best signs to watch for to find out if a person has a strong personality is steady eye contact which means that the person is not afraid to hold eye contact with other people for an extended period of time. To effectively read anyone, it is useful to understand the most common personality types, and most people can be grouped into the introvert or extrovert category. An extrovert is someone who responds to almost everything around them by taking some sort of action. Extroverts draw energy from the outside world, and each one can be described as a people person. An extrovert is the person at work or school who always seems to be talking, and they usually know everyone around them. The extrovert is a person who is friendly, action-oriented, talkative, sociable, enthusiastic, and outgoing. On the flip side, an extrovert can also be attention-seeking, easily distracted, and they can have a lot of trouble spending time alone. Now, The second type of personality is the introvert. And this person tends to solve problems by looking inward at their own thoughts, perceptions, and feelings. The introvert actually needs time alone to recharge after being around a lot of people, and they tend to have a much smaller social circle. It is really easy to tell an introvert. That would actually be me, the introvert. <laughs> I see myself in here, I really do. Apart from an extrovert, because the extrovert will almost always speak before thinking while the introvert will rarely speak without first thinking about what they want to say. Keep in mind that many people are somewhere in the middle of these two extremes. And when reading other people, one of the most important things to understand is that everything a person owns is an extension of their personality. The car that they drive, 
the clothes they wear, and even down to the color of their smartphone. For example, imagine the guy at the gym who wears all black. Everything that he has on is black, even his headphones. Black is a color used by people to appear dark, evil, or dangerous, and it's also the color that is most commonly used to project power. If you were to go to this man's house, you'd probably find that his bedding, his TV, and most of his wardrobe is also black. So what would cause a person to choose all of these products in black? As a child, this man was either bullied or felt weak, and as an adult, he is subconsciously choosing products that are black and behaving in ways that make him seem dark, evil, and powerful. And since all of this is happening on a subconscious level, he wouldn't even be able to tell you why he's choosing everything he owns in these colors. Another key to reading people is understanding that every person on the planet is always moving away from pain or towards pleasure. These are the two driving forces behind all human behavior. And, and I would agree with most of what he's saying. Like I said, I don't totally agree across the board with the video, but I agree with the majority of what he says. And when you think about what he's saying here, we back it up just a little bit. Let's listen just a little bit again. I'm going to say something here. Level. He wouldn't even be able to tell you why he's choosing everything he owns in these colors. Another key to reading people is understanding that every person on the planet is always moving away from pain or towards pleasure. And that subconscious level, that's what I was going to say. You know, subconsciously you do things or you don't do things or because of subconscious because in the back of your mind you don't recognize okay body language you know some people out here think it's complete bullshit you can't read somebody it's complete bullshit and subconsciously they may be missing something and may not even recognize it. I can only tell you from my own experiences in my own life. I don't consider myself no psychic. I haven't mastered no psychic ability. Okay. But I have had psychic experiences. Without knowing it was going to happen and it just happened. No lie fact okay I have read people's body language without knowing I was going to do it and knew things about somebody that I should have no way of knowing I just met them I've only known them for two minutes <laughs> okay <laughs> and I knew things in detail about how they were going to act and how they treat people in that two minutes how that person really was in life how they treated other people how they done and how did I know that okay see this guy's telling you the truth in so many areas here and I don't want to be the one and I'm not going to be the one to tell you what to believe or think okay I'm going to tell you from my own life experiences this is true. I don't totally agree across the board with everything in this video, but I agree with a whole lot of it, okay? And I'm not going to say they're wrong on some of the stuff I disagree with because I can't concretely call them wrong. Do you follow what I'm saying? I may disagree, but I'll agree to disagree until I know otherwise, or I'll sit on a fence. But I won't call them out. Uh-uh. But I do know that on subconscious, subconscious signals, signals, yeah, frequency signals, okay, looking into somebody's eyes, energy, frequencies, we do tell on ourselves. Not everybody acts the same under pressure as somebody else. Some people could be under pressure and not show a damn thing. Other people be under pressure and it stands out like a big neon sign. Because we're all different individual human beings and 
what he said about your shaping from the time you were a child on up was correct. This is who determines who we're going to be as when we're a child. Our shaping, our development. Social engineering and society knows this. Okay? And I'm telling you, body language is real. And I don't care what anybody says. You won't change my mind because I've lived it, experienced it myself. Okay? So, you know, and I don't care if you call me a kook. Because you haven't walked in my shoes and you haven't experienced it. And because you haven't experienced something in your life, does not make it not true. That would be like the person who's never rolled on a helicopter or a plane. Saying that man can't fly. You know, we have airports. You know you can climb on that plane and it'll take you up in the sky. You'll be flying, right? Well, at least you'll be riding in a device that is flying. But if I denied that planes existed, there was no such thing as an airplane or a jet or anything like that or a helicopter, would I be correct for denying that? No. I would not even be in denial of truth. So because you haven't experienced something does not make it not a reality. One must remember this. I'm telling you, from my heart, factual truth. What I told you at the beginning of this video is correct. Not a lie. Has really happened to me. I've really experienced in my own life. I've really read other people and knew shit about them within two minutes and I had no way of knowing. Don't ask me how I did it. Because I couldn't tell you because I'm not an expert in this area. I'm not some guru. I'm not a psychic. I'm not, you know. I know that I've had psychic experiences. I mean, I had no way of knowing my grandma was at my house. But I knew. I had no way of knowing the cops was coming through my house, to my house, when I closed my eyes and suddenly turned on the TV, and there was the film playing in my head, two, three days before it actually happens. No, I didn't know this was going to happen. I had no way of knowing that, but it did. Okay? I read somebody's body language that you didn't know you was going to be doing, and then you did it, like my brother's ex, a boss on a job, and a few other times in my life that I've had this happen to me. But every time it's happened to me, I didn't know it was going to happen. It happened, okay? Here I was, some energy field that I was picking up or reading on that told me these things, okay? So, no. And because of my experience with my friend in Germany's psychic friend that he calls the predictor, okay? I'm sorry, this stuff is real. I don't care what you tell me. It's real as real gets. And I was never telling anybody, you know, I'm going to leave the link for this for you. And I've never told anybody that because you could read body language, blah, blah, blah. What I told Tia Fellers is... The common TFL or that's actually really went out there and approached and been rejected and approached and been rejected and approached and been rejected to the people who have really done this. If they paid attention to anything at all during the times it was rejected, they would have learned how to read body language of the female when rejecting. No lie. If they actually paid attention, they would know how to read that. And they would see the body language immediately. And if you go out there stressed out, worried and nervous that you're going to be rejected again, if you go out there with any of this going on and you think you can hide it from people, you will hide it from the majority most likely. But it's going to be that one that's going to come along 
that's going to be able to pick up the energy field, the vibe, like what I've done, they're doing. And they're going to read that within a couple minutes about you. And they're going to go the other way. Now, it's not saying that this significant would have been your match, your mate, your significant other, or anything like that. You know, and now the last thing I'm going to address is if you go out and hang with your friends and you do things with your friends, you frequent events, you do things with your friends, you go places, hang out, and just be yourself. And don't go out there looking for your significant other. You stand a better chance of meeting her. I know people ain't going to agree with that. They're going to say, how are you going to meet somebody when you're not looking? Because when you go out there not looking, you're not going to feel any pressure. And you're going to say, well, but that don't mean nothing because blah, blah, it does. It does mean something. It means a whole lot. Because not everybody handles pressure the way other people do. This is making an assumption that everybody thinks with your brain. This is making an assumption that everybody's exactly the same. When we have individuality in our experience in life from the time we was a child could be different than somebody else's outside of your school system. And even in your school system, it could be different in one town or state to the next town or state in different areas or different ways. Or different ways that people treat each other or taught. So we all have different experiences, different environments that we grew up in. And we all have different personalities. And some people under pressure do great, man. Don't even affect them. Some people have a little bit of stress under pressure. And some people have a whole lot of stress under pressure. Okay? And it's no different than a TFLer. A guy that's actually really went out there and been rejected over and over. We all know rejection hurts. Okay, so it's no different there. If you go out there looking for somebody after you've been rejected a bunch of times, you're going to be out there sending off vibes and an energy field you're not even aware of. But if you go out there not looking, you know, when I met my son's mother, I wasn't looking. That's right. I was not looking. When I met her, I was not looking. I've actually known quite a few people in my life that met the person they're with and they wasn't looking when they met them. So when you tell me that's complete nonsense, no, you're actually speaking nonsense yourself when you say that. Because you're making an assumption based on your own self. Okay, when you make an assumption based on your own self, you're going with your life experience and not thinking that somebody else's life experience will not be identical to you. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not lying to you. I'm trying to actually help people here. But you have to understand this. And I don't totally, like I said, I don't totally all the way 100% agree with this video. But I agree with so much of this video that this is the video I chose to show you. Because this guy said so much that I know to be accurately true. Okay, and because of my own life experiences, because body language is something people can read. And I think it is an energy thing. It really is. And I don't care what you think, man, if you're under pressure when you go out in the dating scene because you've been rejected a bunch of times. You may think that you're some professional blah, blah, blah that can hide it. But you're not going to hide it from somebody that has the ability to actually read the energy field around you because you're just not. And if you go out there not looking, you're not going to be under that pressure of worrying about being rejected, worrying about impressing, worrying about saying the wrong thing. 
you're not going to care what you say to somebody else because you're going to be yourself. And then if you meet the other, you're not even going to be looking when you meet her. You're going to be yourself with no intentions that she's going to be your opposite other. And then later on you find out that she became your opposite other. I'm just throwing you life experiences, all I'm doing. Do with it what you will. I'll leave the link to this video. You can come here and finish watching the last few minutes of it if you want. Okay, I'll watch the entire thing. But I want you to understand, this is what I wanted to bring up this morning. So this is what I've talked about. This is what I've showed you. And for TFLers, if you've done anything in your life at all, pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Because this is where you lose is from not paying attention. And understand. Subconsciously reading body language is as real as the vehicle you climb in every day. Or the bicycle you climb on and ride down the street. And anybody that don't think that obviously hasn't experienced it or has experienced it and didn't even know they was. I can't answer for them. I can only answer for me. And there's enough out here on body language that, you know, when it's, it's just too much on it. And I've had my own life experiences. I know this is as real as it gets. And with that, I'm on here, guys.